We fished lots of amazing places during our time making fishing videos and as a result found ourselves catching some incredible fish. However, one water I'd always dreamed of fishing was this private 35 acre gravel pit. I first saw the lake on a TV show many years ago and met the owner of the lake by chance whilst travelling in Japan. Martin invited us to fish at his lake and so we jumped at the opportunity. Today is the start of Carl vs Alex season 2. Our stay was to last two days. During this time my brother and I were going head to head in an effort to once and for all prove which of us is the best angler. However, Martin had upped the stakes by offering £500 to a charity of the winner's choice. Alex, being a lover of the outdoors, chose the National Trust, and should I win, I wanted to support the Cystic Fibrosis Trust, for reasons I'll explain later in this video. I won last year, it was pretty easy. Wait, so whoa, whoa. Carl wanted a rematch. No, and we're doing no, it all that's over not again. how it happened, actually. You got lucky a few times, and now I am going to become the triumphant brother, and I'm going to win. Yes. Well, we'll see about that. In season one, I had lost three out of our five battles and was cheated out of the final by one tiny minnow, which resulted in me having to drink the most horrendous fishing bait smoothie. This season, I was going to fish even harder and stop at nothing to beat my little brother, Alex. So for the first episode of Carl vs Alex season two, the rules were as follows. One point would be awarded for each species caught, with an additional point available for the largest of each species. We had from midday on day one, through till midday on day two, to fish wherever we wanted on the lake. This is my spot, yeah? This is your spot. You're going down there. I'm down that way. And I'm gonna catch so many fish, the viewers don't know what to do with themselves. And I'm gonna come along and Karate chop you in the face. May the best brother win. I'm going to try with two rods on the bottom to try and get a carp. Because there's huge carp in here. And then use a little feeder and a small hook to try and catch roach. That's gonna give me some points. So let's get started. I've got two carp rods in the water now. I'm kind of going to leave these for a bit. I haven't seen a lot of uh, signs of carp. I haven't seen any out in front of me. So I put two out to the willow tree and I'm going to leave them whilst I start thinking about roach. I saw a carp jump earlier, so this is exactly where I'm going to put this rod. It's got a pop up on here, two ounce lead. I'm going to chuck this out and then tie up my other one. It's about there. Well, it's quite deep as well. It's like 12, 13 foot deep. Season one was pretty easy. I just kept my calm. Keep calm and just catch fish is my slogan. Oh! Ow! Well, um, that was just a liner. I wasn't getting too excited, I promise. I lost the rig that I was tying. First fish of the match. Don't think Carl's had, had anything yet. Nice little roach. I'm gonna put him in my net. I'm gonna compare nets later to see who's caught the most. What are you using as a hook bait? Fake maggot. That's cheating. Oh, what's this gonna be? Yeah. Roach. That's a nice one. Serious message to everyone out there who is like me and doesn't like putting sun cream on because it just makes your skin feel horrible. Put it on because otherwise there's bad consequences. 
I've got to put it on my lips because they always burn. How do I look? Mm. Burning is worse than putting cream on. Oh, that is a good fish. Carl, got well, a good one. This is feeling so much bigger. The switch to the bigger hook bait, I think, might have worked. Whoa, it's pulling slipping line. Is it rough? It pulled line. Really? Yeah. Still it's got to be a 10. Can't be a rope. Didn't know whether to shout you so you could film it or whether I should just keep it a secret and then surprise you later. You, I just noticed something. What? Keep looking at me. What, my sun cream? <laughs> you have a sun cream with stuff. I know, I don't want to get burnt. This is a good fish. I'm telling you. Honestly, this is a really good fish. What was it on? A piece of corn, hairy corn. Fake corn. Sweet corn. Oh, it's a catfish! What? Oof. That's not what I was expecting. <laughs> that was the last thing I was expecting. What? It's a catfish! If I can get this, then that is a species which Carl might not get. <laughs> what? Well, putting on the corn did the trick for a bigger fish, but I didn't think it would get me a catfish. The last thing I was expecting to catch today on the feeder rod fishing for roach was a catfish. And I caught a catfish, which gives me point for the new species and also point for the biggest one. I don't know how likely it is that Carl's going to catch one of these, but what a crazy looking fish. It's only a baby. They get massive in here, up to a hundred pounds or something. I've realised why they're called catfish. Interestingly, they've still got whiskers. Yeah. Oh, why did I not realise that for so long? Really? Yeah. Really actually? Really actually. You didn't think about the whiskers? I didn't think about the whiskers. I was like, why are they called catfish? Like, what, they're nothing like a cat. Do you know what dogfish look like? Dogs. <laughs> oh, that was cool. What next? Catfish, roach, carp. Martin, the owner of Hommersfield Lake, helped us out with some information about the species in his fishery. He explained that there were roach, carp, catfish and hybrids, along with a number of tench and bream too. Before getting back to the fishing, he invited us to help out with some netting on his stock pond. He breeds fish himself for stocking into the lake and selling to other fisheries, and this was going to be an opportunity to check up on how the young fish were doing. Phil is on the other side, he's drawing the net around. Martin's been telling me what to do. I'm just standing here really, holding the net. Like a lemon. Like a lemon, yeah. And soon, we might see some carp. Basically, the first thing I look for is body shape and weight. What we'll do, we're going to net the pond again and uh, we'll let you boys put one each into the lake today. Oh, and it gets better. You <laughs> might catch him tomorrow morning. So these are four year olds, Some, one might be five year old. In the van. Oh, nice. nice. And you boys can put those in the lakes. We're very privileged to be able to release two new fish into the lake of Homersfield today. This one is named after Alex. Alex the Great. Alex. <laughs> good luck. Grow huge. Now for the good fish. <laughs> it's named after me. The legend. The le <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. With the netting and stocking complete, it was back to the fishing and bird watching for Alex. 
た。That one's a bream. No, it's a hybrid. Might help me make up for your catfish. I actually noticed that I was kind of running out of maggots. So I switched over to a ground bait feeder. Cast it back out. I put the line in the clip so it's going out to the same distance every time. Sit down and wait for a bite. As the day wore on and the temperatures rose, Alex began thinking about carp. The rods that we'd cast out on the bottom were yet to receive a bite, and with the warm weather, the fish were sure to be found basking somewhere. I was catching roach consistently, and to be honest, the fact that hundreds of carp were rising up towards the surface had gone without me noticing. Alex, though, was ready to hunt them down. Just seen some fish, really close in. Time to stalk out a carp. There were fish drifting around just off the bank. Alex excitedly crept around trying to flick a ball of maggots in front of them. I'm really close in. He's gonna spook, I'm sure. Saw it. Oh, that's a really big one. That's not so good. Oh, he was, ah, oh, he wants that, but it just sunk a bit quick. Oh no, there's, there's a decent one coming in close. Yep, we got one. <laughs> yes! Whoa! I saw two fish coming along this margin. One was probably 30 pounds or more. It was huge. And then there was a smaller one next to it. And the big one didn't take my bait as usual, and the small one did. But I've got a car. This small amount of sun has really brought them out on the surface. Come here. No. He escaped it. Yay, we got it. Carl definitely hasn't got a car. There's my result of about an hour's stalking them. They just suddenly appeared after that sun came out and it was so worth uh, stopping roach fishing and picking up my free lining rod and some maggots. Um, how big is this? Hmm. I would give myself 10 pounds. Yeah. I have got scales, they're just in my bag a long way from here, so I can't be bothered to go back and get them, but I'm giving myself 10 pounds. You got 10 pounds to beat, Carl. Have a look then. Oh, there's a bit of noise there's in there. Huge fish in there. So my biggest is this one. That's your biggest? That's my biggest. You're having a laugh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna get these back and we've got to see what Carl's caught. Apparently he's got some bigger than this. Nice. This storm is coming. This storm is definitely coming. What's gonna be in the net? Oh, you've got loads. Whoa. That's quite a few fish I got there. Oh, actually. Whoa, that one's that's a hybrid. That one's not a roach. Does that count as a different species though? I suppose it does. Yeah, it does. Whoa, show me your biggest one then. 
Well, there's a few of a similar size, but Whoa. those two are probably the biggest two. What? They are beautiful. The stamp of fishing here is unreal, and I was just getting one after another. It's definitely a point for me for the roach. At this stage, we were quite equal. With my point for the larger roach and two points for the only hybrid, I was sitting close behind Alex's score of five. This weather isn't fun, but it is good weather for ducks. See, they just love it. As soon as it starts raining, the ducks come out to play. Right, it's time to bait up a spot for the carp in front of this swim that I'm probably gonna fish tonight. going for a little wonder. See if I can find some more fish. Okay, so it might not be particularly impressive, but I've got another species. I just landed this bream. Whee. Just in case you're watching this video and want to fish the lake yourself, you can actually book guided trips at Hommersfield with the local expert, Phil Spinks. He'll help you with your fishing and advise on the best way to catch your target species. Phil was a great help on our session too. Although I wish he hadn't told Alex that the carp love a free line ball of maggots. What? What is this fish? It's swimming so fast. What on earth is this? Hoo -hoo -hoo. It's a tench. It's a tench. It's not the carp I was after, but it is a new species. Come on. Yes, another species. There we have it. Another species, this one being a very green tench. I think I'm gonna go back to my original swim, get my rods ready for tonight, and then see if we can't catch a bigger fish throughout the hours of darkness. Um, Alex? Yeah? What is that? It is a stick. <laughs> a camouflaged bank stick? Got a bug in my eye. It is a, um, sorry about that. I've got a bug right in my eye. Oh no, sorry mate. I can see it, it's like normal life out there and then there's just a bug in the foreground. Yeah, I got a V-shaped stick from the ground, put it in. And the good thing about that is it's really cheap and once I'm done I can just chuck it in the bush. Recycling? Yeah. It's just been constantly changing. We've had it really hot today and I managed to stalk that carp and now it looks like it's going to storm again. Blimey, it's hailing. There's hailstones falling from the sky. Oh my head! One just hit me on the head. What is going on? This is nuts. Look at it out there. This evening has been so, so weird. We have had every type of weather and now it's so peaceful and beautiful. The light is incredible. But more importantly, I think I've tried to total up the scores and if Alex is being truthful with me he is one point ahead because he's had tench and carp and I haven't had either of those species. And catfish. Oh yeah. Oh. Hmm. There's all to play for though. 
Mm hmm. Oh, we always say that. There's <laughs> all to play for. Do, 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 do. No. Yeah. God, I can't lose again. As night approached, I prayed that my carp rods would eventually produce a bite. I hadn't exactly seen many fish in the area, so thought I might try fishing elsewhere the next morning, as time was beginning to run out. What are we going to do today? I don't know. I could try and catch a bream because I haven't caught a bream yet. Or I could just stick it out, try and catch a bigger carp to secure myself the lead. Ooh, decisions. What do I do? I got to tie some reefs. I'd made my mind up. I was going to fish the opposite end of the lake, down in a little bay which I'd baited up the day before. I headed down there, whilst Alex stuck it out in his swim, hoping for a bream or a tench. Alex and I have always been quite competitive, probably because we're brothers, but this time I was particularly keen to try and win. My best friend Ryan had recently become a father and his little boy was born with cystic fibrosis, this is why I had chosen the CF Trust as my charity, should I win. Whilst Ryan and his partner were stuck in the hospital with a poorly baby, I was out fishing and having fun. It made me realise how grateful I am for my health, which made me desperate to win, to give this money to a charity which helps those without the blessing of good health. There really isn't a lot of time now. I just need a carp and a big one at that. I've moved swim, the wind is blowing down here. It certainly looks good. Just gotta catch one. Just rip off, just bite, just eat the bait, fish. I need one carp and it needs to be bigger than 10 pounds. Time is rapidly running out and I've, again, savage liners on both rods. The lines are twitching, I'm just not actually connecting with any carp. I think there just might be a lot of bream and roach in the swim. That's all. Carp. When the bite was going up, I thought it was gonna be a bream because it just really slowly crept up. The important thing now is that I don't lose it. Well, in my net is not only a bigger carp than the one Alex caught yesterday, but it's also just an incredible looking one as well. Um, I've had a carp. Yeah, can you um, get down here? I just need pictures. <laughs> Unlucky bro, see you in a bit. There he is. Hello. <laughs> you caught one then? Yep. <sighs> yeah. Oh, it's bigger than I thought it was. That is 100% bigger than mine. Yeah? Way bigger. So, a point for carp, a point for the biggest carp. Have you caught a bream? No. Oh, yes, that literally means one, two. I think that means I've won. It might have done, <laughs> I've no. Come, I've literally come to the lake of my dream, somewhere I've wanted to fish since years and years ago. Safe to say I'm a very, very happy guy. Oh, and by the way, I also won Carl vs. Alex. No. Episode one, season two. Thank you very much. If that wasn't enough, just 10 minutes later and I was in again. Ooh. 
by the time I'd landed this fish, the challenge was over. Whoa. Didn't expect to get another one. Sadly, this one was just after our competition finished, but what a place. And what a great couple of days we've spent here. Welcome back to Carl vs Alex. Last time, Carl took the win after catching a pretty big carp in the last few minutes of the competition. But the brotherly rivalry has now resumed, and thanks to our friend Rob, we've been given permission to fish a beautiful stretch of the River Severn, where the target species will be barbel and chub. One point will be given for each fish caught, and then there will be a bonus point for the largest fish of the day. Let the best brother win. We've got to flip a coin to see who goes upstream and see who fishes downstream. Cue the coin, Carl. I don't have one. Oh. I don't even flip a bucket then. Heads. You got it. <laughs> so you can choose, Carl. Uh, I'll go upstream. No, downstream, sorry. You're going downstream? Yeah. Why did you make that choice, Carl? <laughs> it's not an interview, mate. We have got a. You know, keep it, keep our excitement to a minimum with our other anglers we don't want to disturb. It's quite exciting today because this is actually our first competition that we've done on a river. So we're going to be catching some different species. Well, no, we fished on the rivers in the multi-species oh, yeah. challenge last year. This, this competition is solely on the river. Yeah. You're not allowed anywhere else. In fact, we have to be next to each other. Oh, I've got to put up with you all day. Because we're in the same swim, because we're using very similar tackle, Dude, similar bait, it's yeah, going to really show who's got that edge. And it's going to be me. <laughs> You'll do nothing. You'll do nothing, mate. Carl's in a bad mood this morning. Once we finish tying up the rods, can we start? I guess so, yeah. I'm all set up, ready to go, and you're cutting your nails. Yeah. Please, can I start? Yeah, go for it. Whilst Alex continued to give himself a manicure, Carl got the rod out, caught Barbara and won the competition. The match would finish at 7pm, which would give us about 12 hours of fishing. And with both of our rods in the water, it was game on. Ooh. You got my line. I've got a fish. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Ooh, what a great start. One point to me. Alex is playing dirty. Yeah. Casting straight in, tangling my line, pulling a fish out from exactly where I was angling. We're having to side cast today because there's this massive overhanging tree above us. The sun rose higher and over the following few hours we struggled to catch any more fish. And things weren't helped when a flock of noisy geese joined us. Wildlife. Oh no. Did they just scare off all the fish or what? I reckon so, yeah. There's no fish left in here after that commotion. It's been pretty difficult so far. I still haven't caught anything. I've been staring at the rod tip and it hasn't barely moved. Um, but we're both getting pretty hungry, so my proposition is this, Alex. You cook bacon sandwiches. Yes. And I give you two points for doing so. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, no, no, one, one point. One point? Yourself. One point. No, yeah, z no points. Wait, did you just say no points? Are you changing the rules? We shook on it. Get on with it then, bro. And I want a bit of pepper and maybe some egg in mine as well.
I'm hungry. Fish haven't been very hungry this morning though, have they? No. Breakfast time. With our stomachs full, it was time to focus on the fishing again. Carl may have given me a point for cooking up breakfast, but there was still plenty of time left. Oh. Oh. That's a... Chub. Barbel. Chub. Really? Yeah. Trying to begin my uh, catch up on Alex. Slow, steady fight. Oh, crumbs. Is it going to be the biggest of the day so far? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. We got ourselves a barbel, or I've got myself a barbel. Well, this fish came along just as I was starting to get a little bit worried. I hadn't had a bite and I would got a bit distracted. I was doing some work on my phone. And then I looked up and <laughs> the rod tip was just whacking round. And this powerful, lovely, like silvery golden barbel was on the end. What a result. Oh, it's such a relief. You don't even know. When we come out and make these videos, sometimes it, it feels like a bit of pressure because we've driven for three hours and we've set up all the cameras and put in all the time to you know and then if the fish don't come along it's, it makes you worried and makes you waste loads of time but it, the fish did come along so i'm very relieved well we've both been using the same case haven't we just feeders full of ground bait nice smelly ground bait pellet on the hair rig but we have been also using pepper army we were casting these feeders into roughly the middle of the river and simply sitting back and watching the rod tips. Or should I say, not watching the rod tips. Anyway, after quite a while of waiting, one of the rods finally moved. Oh, I think it's a small one. Oh no. <laughs> oh wow. And this doesn't feel like a bad fish at all. I think it's going to be a bigger fish than your one, Carl. Got myself my first barbel and my second fish of the day. I just had a very hard fighting battle with this river seven barbel they really hold deep and uh incredibly strong fish is that really bigger than my one? Oh yeah definitely it's longer way longer really yeah oh yeah my one was quite small actually yeah okay i'll give you that let's get him back in the water i'm gonna catch my head then I nearly did thanks to that barbel i had now taken a two point lead However, that wasn't enough for me, and seeing as things were a little quiet in the swim, I decided to hatch a plan. Carl's falling asleep. I've got a plan. We're gonna give this spot a go. Oh, it looks beautiful. Sit back. Just one or two birds up there. Alex would be able to tell me what they are, but Alex has gone. He left the camera, but took the bank stick and his net and his bucket. So I would assume he's gone fishing elsewhere. Which is a little bit weird because we did agree at the beginning that this was the swim which we had to fish. 
that's the rules. No. Oh yes. Oh, it's a barbel. No way. <laughs> I need to ring Alex. This is ridiculous. Oh, I'm getting a call. Hello, Alex. Yeah. I caught a barbel. Really? On the float? No way! Yeah! You had a nice nap then? Oh uh, yeah, I slept for rather a while. Currently hooked up into a barbel. What? You're playing one? Yes, as we speak. Oh well, it's disqualified. Because it's from a mm, swim, we, we said we had to fish this swim. Well yeah, you see, I was hoping you wouldn't wake up and I could sneak out a couple of fish from another spot, but I don't think I've managed to get away with it. Uh, not really, mate, and I've just caught one, so, um, Damn yeah, it. see you later. Okay, bye. Bye. He caught me, he caught me, no, and he's caught a fish himself. <laughs> wow. I love it when they do that. Yes! As happy as I am to catch this fish, Carl did catch me in the process and I was fishing against the rules in another swim. So it won't count in the competition, but it will make me a very happy angler. Little barbel are the cutest little fish you could imagine. It's so adorable. L cute little perfection in miniature. Anyway, we got one. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I probably won't tell Alex about how small that barbel was, but it definitely counts. Considering I didn't even think I would use the float rod, I'm really glad I brought it now. It's really paid off. What have I got down there? Oh, I snagged on the branches. Oh, why does this always happen to me and never happen to Alex? Hello, 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 hello. Hello, mate. So? Well, I caught a barbel, a legitimate one. I don't really know how I was thinking I was going to get away with it anyway. Well, people who do bad things whilst other people are sleeping, they always get found out. I wasn't very happy and things weren't about to get any better for me. No. Feeling a little bit smug now. But take it easy though, because this is really light line. This is what I had for the little fish. Man, just shows. If you don't cheat, then you get a bit of luck in your favour. Oh, wow, that feels good. Narrowly missing out on the biggest fish so far, by the way. The ones you caught upstream don't count. We were now level and Carl still wasn't finished with his run of luck. No. Yes. Beautiful chub. Bye. Alex is not looking so happy over there. Carl had somehow taken the lead, and I needed to stress eat to calm me down. Hours and hours and more uneventful hours passed. It would be true to say we were both getting a little impatient now. You can tell that we haven't got much time left because I'm casting more often. Alex keeps doing the crep check. What's on your feet today, bruv? Nike, blackjack, hole in toe, rubber sole. Sports socks. Yeah, boy. Crip chick. Doesn't matter what shoes you wear if you're not catching any fish though. Just gotta put out a little bit more bait. Oh that camera's 
Is that camera still recording? Yeah. Oh. That was so painful. Oh. That wasn't even funny. I didn't realise that it was going to come out of the catapult so fast. Ah. Good job one of those didn't go in my eye. Oh, that's so bad. I'm sorry, Alex. I'm actually sorry. My lips feel numb. <laughs> I didn't realise how strong it was. I know we both want to win this competition, but it should never have to come to violence. Anyway, moving on, and time was quickly ticking away. With the scores still standing at 4-3 in Carl's favour, I really needed a miracle if I was going to take the win this time around. 10 minutes to 7. Seriously? Yeah, 10 minutes left. Whoa! I've got a fish. What? This might just seal it, seal the deal. Must be five minutes till the end now. <laughs> You've been playing this fish for long enough. Yeah! And that must be pretty much time up. I had somehow just landed another barbel to bring the scores to a draw. And it was the biggest fish of the day, which would secure me the bonus big fish point. Well, that's it. I've won this oh, second you're episode. Five minutes away. Five minutes. Alex season There's still two. five minutes. Yeah, no chance for you to get another one, Carl. It's the end. But I'm very happy about my win. I'll admit, it wasn't exactly the friendliest fishing competition, but I was very happy to take the victory. And that leaves the ongoing scores for this season at one all. It's all down to the grand finale coming soon. Is it possible to make top quality gourmet food using only ingredients found in the wild? What if we, my brother and I, went out and found all our ingredients in the wild and then tried to cook up a MasterChef winning dish for Daniel Clifford, the two Michelin star celebrity chef on the telly? A phone call later and we had the restaurant booked professional chef waiting and just one day to catch, yes. forage and cook in the biggest, most challenging Carl vs Alex episode yet. Oh God, if that was my fish and someone else was doing that, there's a good chance I'd have probably had buttered you by now. Well, I've got proper nerves for this one. Here we go. By the end of the day, we need enough top quality ingredients to make a main course and a dessert. And a dessert? Yeah, and you're not allowed to go foraging in people's gardens. So no like going around the back and pulling up your carrots or your cucumbers, all right? Hmm. Anyway, good luck. Luck was exactly what we'd need, as there could only be one winner, and that would be who scored highest for flavor, presentation, and creativity, according to the pro chef. Remember, we'd only be allowed to cook with ingredients we'd found in the wild, so searching out tasty food was going to be vital. It's been a long time since I beat Carl. I'm gonna do it today. Now I pretended that I was about to drive off to some secret foraging spots because I wanted to not draw attention to the fact that there's an amazing spot for blackberries just behind our house that I don't think Alex knows about. Now we're talking. I think I need quite a few more. So I'm heading down south to the seaside because every good meal contains a piece, a lump, a chunk of protein. And that's what I'm gonna try and get this morning. There we go. Some lovely berries in there. Oh, I've just had a text. I gotta pull over. Damn it. Oh no. The guy who I'm going out, who I was gonna go out on the boat with. Apparently the forecast messed up and my boat trip has been cancelled, basically. No bass for me then. Being up here has reminded me of being a kid and looking for blackberries with my mum. However, I have found another ingredient, another interesting type of food. These are slow berries. You can make gin out of them. So what I'm thinking about doing is mixing them in with this. And maybe making something Oh, what is that? Oh, 
She looks quite calm here. Oh, she looks decent. I guess I've just got to hope that that is enough. I've only got today and I really need to find some other ingredients and go and catch a fish. Fishing rod. There are just thousands of little flies on the front of my car. You know what, you could probably you could probably collect them all and make a meal out of that actually. I hope it doesn't actually come to that. Whilst Alex set to work fishing off the beach, I left home in search of mushrooms. Keeping my eyes open as well as I'm driving for some kind of fruit tree. Apples, pears, plums or something. Or a banana. I'd laugh so much if I just randomly saw a If I have actually just found an apple tree with apples on it, that would be the first bit of good luck I've ever had in one of these Carl versus Alex challenges. Here we go. So many apple. Uh, is any better? Oh, uh, this is better. Hmm. Alex might not find any fruit at all. And I found berries and now I found juicy apples that taste dreadful, but we won't talk about that. Back on the beach, Alex was struggling. Nothing. Zilch. Getting a phone call. Hello. Hey, Alex. Um, have you have you caught any uh, ed uh edible fish? Uh, yeah. I'm off, I'm just off Brighton in a boat, and I've had one bass. Yeah, I've had, I've had a bass, so... Yeah, know. but was your bass, um, was your bass uh, legal limit, like 42 centimetres? Oh yeah, well over 42, yeah. Do you know where any mushrooms are? In the woods. No, come on, Alex. I need help. I've, oh, I, I, I've never foraged for mushrooms in my life. Better learn. Bye. I don't know how I feel about that phone call. I just lied, like straight up, completely lied. I thought it could have been a little bit more supportive than that. I guess foraging is a bit like fishing. You can go a long, long time, you know, not finding anything. And then all of a sudden it comes good. So I've just got to stick at it, I think. Well, I'm going to change lure. I'm going to put on this, this beauty. Ah, whose idea was it to pick nettles? Ow. I don't know how I'm going to make it not sting the chef's mouth. On the topic of mushrooms, um, I haven't found anything. Right, so things, as you can tell, aren't going perfectly to plan for me. I haven't got my bass or any other fish. And I haven't got, in fact, I've got nothing. Could have had some kale, but it would have been probably poisoned by the nuclear power station right next to it. Later on, I've got some foraging plans. And in terms of the protein, I've got a little trick up my sleeve. For now though, I thought whilst we're at the sea, there's one ingredient which is uh, probably the most important of them all, and that is salt. Now, I've never done this before. I've just watched some videos on how to do it, and uh, it involves boiling seawater and extracting the salt as the water evaporates. So let's give it a go. Is this a dandelion? Quest for salt begins. That is a dandelion. Can you eat dandelions? Hmm. Yep, confirmed. We can eat them. More leaves. Right, we've got to get some clean water. Oh, no, it's getting deeper. There we go, there we go, there we go. So I've got a stove. I've got my salt water. I'm getting a bit worried about the mushrooms. I feel like I need some help from someone who actually knows what they're doing. Well, my first ever mushroom find is hugely disappointing. It looked like it was half dead. You guys watching this video, if you recreate what we're doing, don't take risks with mushrooms. Because whilst you can eat all of these mushrooms that you find, some of them you can only eat once. Because after you've eaten the mushroom, you're dead. All right? I've done a few miles now. 
This was a frustrating stage in the challenge for both of us. However, Alex's water level was dropping and I was back on the road, heading towards some lakes that I could fish. Excuse me, you haven't seen any mushrooms, have you? Mushrooms? Mushrooms? No. Mushrooms. No. no mushrooms? No. Why has no one seen mushrooms? It's almost like mushrooms don't exist. Oh, excuse me, sir, have you seen any, mush seen any mushrooms? No? Never mind. Ah, no, it's spitting. There we have it. That is our salt for our meal. Grip farm trout legs. Right, here goes. Time to be sneaky. We're going fly fishing. I'm definitely not at the fishmongers. Hiya. Um, Bit of a strange question, but um, I'm having a competition with my brother, a cooking competition. We were meant to catch the fish ourselves, so I'm kind of cheating, but I need it to be realistic. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so it, I can pretend that I caught them from close into their shore. Okay. 435 Yeah, that's fine. Um, no, you can't. I hope Cole doesn't find out. That can go in there and we zip it up and that's going to stay cool until I cook it up. You know when you do something a bit naughty at school, you get that weird like feeling inside, you're like, damn it, I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, forget about that, we've got to find some mushrooms. I bought myself Kit Kat, but I'm only going to let myself eat it once I've caught a trout. I'm gonna forage some blackberries, some apples. I'm gonna make apple and blackberry crumble. Just without the crumble bit, it would just be apple and blackberries. The next part of my day takes me to where I used to live, actually. All I've got is a box. Ooh, rack of lamb would be quite nice, actually. Sorry, didn't mean to say that around you. Feels good to be out here again, picking blackberries. This one's for you, mum, my blackberry picker companion. Since day one, Chef Daniel is going to, uh, I think he's gonna fall in love with my, my dessert dish, I'm sure of it. Time for a tactic change, I think. Whatever I'm doing isn't working. That is not focusing. Come on. My camera just doesn't know how to do this. Oh, there we go. F Never mind. Not a nicer cast. Just got to the spot and I've just seen someone with a basket. They look like other foragers. Found an apple, by the way. Unfortunately, it was in my lunchbox. I mean, that one looks poisonous. Am I seeing things? What? This is like a mushroom city. That is actually nuts. There's hundreds. I don't know what they are, but that is really cool. Mushrooms are just like the coolest things apart from fish. At this stage, and in my opinion, fish were in no way cool. In fact, they were immensely frustrating, as no matter where I cast and what fly I used, I just couldn't catch one. In fact, I think I spent more time tangled than I actually did fishing. Alex, on the other hand, seemed to be enjoying himself. It is such a fun thing to do though, wandering in the woods, looking for edible mushrooms. Don't know what that is. It genuinely looks like it could be a death cat. It's just scary, isn't it, that if you ate that, you would die. Yeah, so you gotta be Incredibly careful. Guys, I've just spotted something through the bracken. No, what is it, what is it? It looks, oh my goodness, no way, no way. It's hedgehog fungus. It is hedgehog fungus, which means we've got mushrooms for dinner. Instead of having gills, 
like your normal mushrooms that you get from the shop. They've got like little spines that come out. Carl has never done mushroom foraging before, so I don't know if he's gonna find anything. A few more. It took me so long to like even just get confident IDing like simple mushrooms like those hedgehogs in. Look at these. Field mushrooms and maybe he's got some help from someone. I ain't telling him any of my tricks. I was just heading back to the car after collecting a few more mushrooms and I've stumbled across some wood sorrel and it reminded me I've got no green foods. Wow, it's really lemony. How about I make a beech leaf salad? <clears throat> Tastes like paper, just forget about it. Alex was on a roll, finding himself pine needles and heather, no doubt tea making material. I though was running out of time to catch a trout. It's been a good day, spent the whole day outdoors, enjoying some very nice surroundings and uh, had a pretty decent afternoon foraging, got myself some mushrooms. Yes, yes, yes. This actually happened. I've fished for so long. I don't even know what to do. Oh my goodness, it's a stricken line. Um, right, let's get this line out of the way. Oh, my reel's just falling off. That's not supposed to happen. Oh, oh okay, I'm gonna land this without a reel then. We're gonna have supper in three, two. Oh, crumbs. We're gonna have dinner. Yes, we are. Hook is out. That is a beauty. Right, let's get the priest. Hang on a minute. We no, 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 no. no. Damn it. I've lost some, I've lost some mushrooms. I put my bag down and they just fell out. <laughs> Covered in mud now. That was it. I'd fished for hours and the one fish I'd caught escaped. Any other time I'd keep fishing and say something like, never give up. But this time, I was tired and beaten. With the day coming to an end, we realized that without some sort of oil, cooking was gonna be very difficult. Together we agreed to allow one bonus ingredient each, which we could buy from the shop to make the final dish more acceptable for the professional chef. Well, this morning I managed to get two sea bream, definitely caught them, flaky sea salt, I've then got a tub of blackberries, a tub of mushrooms, and then I've got some wood sorrel, some heather, some pine needles to make a tea. So yeah, we've got a fair amount of stuff actually. You know, it's not, not bad for a day's foraging. We both had a decent haul, but we're yet to choose our bonus ingredients. These we'd buy the following day before heading up to the restaurant. Well, here is my final ingredient selection. And just next to this pile of ingredients should have been a trout, but there isn't. And that doesn't feel good. So tomorrow I'm gonna have to cheat. I'm gonna go to Tesco and whilst we get our bonus ingredients, which we are permitted, I'm also gonna get the ingredient which I'm not permitted. I was tempted by getting one of these, but I feel like Alex would probably realize something was up. I have a fish. So we have sorted out our bonus ingredients. Extra virgin olive oil. Why though? The, the good stuff. Why? Because you need some sort of fat to cook in. Butter. Is that salted butter? Salted butter, which that's, means I don't have to... That's two ingredients. That's salt and no, butter. No, 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 there's one ingredient. It's, it's butter. Well, if I knew that was the case, I'm gonna have to spend my whole day boiling See, this, this water has got the oil. This has got oil and it's got olives, so... No, the oil comes from the olives. And that was it. The time had come to visit one of the most prestigious restaurants in the country. We'd be cooking for Daniel Clifford alongside his head chef, Mark. Welcome to Midsummer House, boys. Thank There's you. an apron for you. Thanks. There's an apron for you. Thank I'm very, very excited much. about this. I've watched all your programs. I'm very nervous <laughs> about this. 
What are you cooking? I'm going to attempt to cook a rainbow trout and leaves from the wild. And what are we doing with them? Um, I'm, it's a secret. Okay, perfect. Um, right, if you need a knife, you need anything, give us a shout. I'm going to stand back and watch you both uh, crack on. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. You. And that was when it dawned on us. Neither of us had any experience in a professional kitchen. This was going to be interesting. I don't know what to do with myself. Now this might look a little bit strange, but I'm taking my blackberries first because I need to get dessert sorted quick. Wow, look at them. Do you know we can't buy them this fresh? Really? Yeah. They're stunning. They're stunning, yeah. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely beautiful. So you found these yourself, yeah? Oh uh, yeah. Oh, I've got some uh, some salt. Oh, well, of course we had to find every ingredient, and I know that salt is so important, right? Massively. So I, I spent I think four hours on the beach trying to uh, boil away salt, uh, water, so I could. So you've made your own salt? Yes. Yeah. Well, I've been a chef for 30 years and I've never made my own salt. So that's, <laughs> if there is a... Tear off the seat. I'd be nervous. I am nervous. But actually, I'd be asking for some brotherly love and see if I could have some of that. So far, all I've done is cut up some apples. Oh, yes. This is what I need. <laughs> this is what we need. This is what we need. A bit of power. My plan was to liquidise my foraged fruits and then freeze them into a sweet treat for Daniel's dessert. I don't know what Carl's up to. Oh, that does not look appetising. What are you doing? Do you have a freezer in this establishment? We're off to find the coldest freezer in the world. This is actually really hard to do. I haven't done much filleting, but it's not an easy trick to master. I'm quite happy with that. I think you should be very happy with that. I've seen chefs that can't fillet fish that well. Did you hear that? We've got it on film. Yes. Wow. Right. We just got to hope it freezes in the time we have. I think it'll be all right. What am I doing with this? Mate. Unforgettable. You didn't do a bad job for that, did you? Oh no, that's dreadful. That's dreadful. I'll be honest with you. If that if that was my fish and someone else was doing that, there's a good chance I'd have probably had buttered you by now. Do you have a dog? Yeah, uh, yes, but he probably wouldn't accept that. Oh, <laughs> come on. Joking aside, I was struggling. Alex, however, had nearly finished removing the bones from his fillets. Sensing I was a little lost, Daniel showed me how to best enclose my trout in foil, ready for cooking. This is called cooking fish on, on papillots. Papillots. So basically you're cooking it in a bag. Sounds professional. Very professional. It looks, it's looking good so far. With the fish ready for the oven, I melted butter into my fruit sauce and then heated the pan, ready to cook the nettle dandelion burger patty thing. This salt took me four hours to make. We now have uh, five minutes left, Jim. That is much. <laughs> I'm so bad under pressure. How's it looking? It's looking brilliant. And there it is. My fish is fresh out of the oven. Right, so we now have two minutes left. Look at that way, so the skin stays crispy. Ah, my fingers. Ah, my eyes. And with no time to spare, I spilled way too much sauce on the fish and headed out to serve my main course. Wow, so what do we have here? Well, the uh, tea is a nettle and dandelion tea, and that is a wild, or 
Rod and Lion caught rainbow trout. And what's the sauce? The sauce, uh, the is, sauce is a blackberry and apple uh, locally sourced. Okay, lovely. Locally sourced sauce. Oh, dear. Oh. It felt so surreal to see my attempt at cooking on a plate in front of such an experienced and highly skilled chef. As Daniel began eating my meal, Alex was making the finishing touches to his sea bream and mushrooms. The fish is a little bit over. It could do with some salt. Oh, look. There's a pin bone. I think the tea is... I know he said it might just have a little bit of mint in it, but it's definitely got a lot more mint than anything else because the mint is really coming through. So mint and um, mint, trout, trout, apple and blackcurrant, it's a new combination to me. Now I've been cooking for a long time and I've never had this combination, but. It's not disgusting. Not disgusting is good, I thought. And he kept on eating more. It must have been okay. I was feeling confident. It's lacking acidity. It's lacking seasoning. The fish is a little bit overcooked. The nettles, I think they've been overcooked. They're a little bit stewed, so. And then he went on for about 10 minutes, pointing out all of the faults in my dish. So I think we'll cut to Alex now. Okay, I'm done with that. Tea. Thank you. The tea was looking good. A pleasant pine and heather aroma was filling the kitchen. Oh, you know what? I think that's going to be good. Look, I get young chefs coming into this kitchen that, that uh, have, have cooked in other restaurants and they get nervous cooking here. So for them to come in straight off and go straight into a professional kitchen where they don't know where anything is, I think they've done a good job. There we go. Lovely. Sea bream. Finishing touch. This is very uh, Scandinavian to finish it at the table. Really? Yeah, this is what well, like, the best chef in the world oh. they do. Yeah, that's why, I'm, that's why I'm doing it. Okay, thank you very much. Enjoy. The quality of the mushrooms is probably better than we can actually buy at the restaurant. So they're beautiful. What's lovely about this is the skin is really, really crispy, and you can see that he's taken the scales off. It's a little bit dry as a dish itself. It needs a sauce, but the salt, that was definitely worth the effort. I don't want to tell them this, but I think it's all down to dessert. After what felt like a marathon couple of days, we were now in the final stage of our challenge. Right, okay, right, so let's, let's go, boys. You've got 25 minutes starting now. Thank Good you. Luck. He said he liked the salt, so I'm gonna put some salt in it. Now what I did earlier was put my berries into the freezer. So I, I'm hoping by the time we have to serve, that will be, yeah, a nice lolly. Then with these, I'm gonna bake them into crisps. Hmm. These are quite good. The edges are crisping up slightly. He's turning normally a 12 hour process, into a 22 minute process. So who got you both into fishing, your parents? No, Carl got into it. Um, he literally just decided that he wanted to give it a go because I'm a younger brother. You know, you see your older brother doing something yeah. and you're like, I want to be like him. And then I gave it a go and it turned out I was better than him. So, <laughs> you know, fine. Good one, good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, no, no, oh, no. Oh, that's bad. All right, Josh, we need to get him out. Things are getting real bad in here. They were on that. What is he doing? Absolute disaster. For Alex, dessert wasn't so complicated, but would the unusual combination of fruit and salt even taste good? Ready for your dessert? Yeah. Here I have freshly foraged blackberries. You know, as blackberries go, they're, they're nice. I'm not sure if he's sprinkled a tiny bit of salt on them. because I think he has. They're delicious. I know you're quite shy about it, but you do have, there is a little, there's something that's going on upstairs that actually understands food really well. No, but I, I mean, like but some people, they don't understand the concept of it, but you understand the concept of it. You it actually understand. tastes good, doesn't it? Like, why, well, it I don't just, know why it would. Salt changes everything. Yeah. Cool, thank you. 
This is the moment of truth. My ice lolly. Look at that. It's frozen. I'd worked hard on my second dish, picking the crispiest apple slices to sit next to the wild fruit lolly. This is your uh, berry and apple. This is more in the taking of a two-star restaurant, uh, multiple servings. Thank you, enjoy. The presentation around the side could have been cleaned up and, and you know, the crisps, some of them are crispy, some of them aren't. Love the presentation, very two Michelin starred um, effort there. Would I pay for this? No, is the answer. If they came around my house and cooked this for my dinner, would I be happy? No, is the answer. But to come into my kitchen and to produce two dishes off the bat in a very small time scale with ingredients they found themselves, I think they've done an amazing job. I think there is a clear winner, but I'm gonna reveal that later. Judging was about to commence to decide which of us would take home the catch, forage, and cook winning plate. Okay. Scoring, yeah, out of ten. Ten is you'd serve it in your restaurant. Yeah, it's like the best food in the world. Yeah, and one is you could eat it, but only just. It was time to start on my main course for flavour. Let's give that a six out of ten. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Wow. Presentation. Yeah, I'd give that a six. Uh, for Alex's main course, the salt made such a difference. Do you know, I've cooked for nearly 35 years now and uh, I've never seen someone make their own salt. And the difference, the impact on flavor alone, I have to give him an eight. An eight? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh dear. So creativity. One had the concept of a trout comes from the river, so it was surrounded by nettles and dandelions, and they're the things that would grow round. And that, as a chef with creativity, that's the, the, the route that I would think. I'm gonna give you a seven. Cool, thank you very much, that's very kind. And Alex's, the mushrooms were the best mushrooms I've ever seen. Really beautiful. Obviously the salt made a difference. So I'm gonna give him a seven as well. The main course scores brought the subtotals up to 19 for me and 21 for Alex. I'm going to start with Alex. He's taken a massive risk. He learned from the main course and he seasoned them slightly with a salt and it really did encourage them flavours to come out. I'm going to give him an 8. What? Where, where are we? Yes. Here we are. We're here. Knew that salt. Salt with salt. blackberries. Who, who would have right. guessed it? It's yeah, not exactly. Right. Presentation. He chose a really nice porcelain bowl, but I can't really give him the. Uh, it, was credit. Your, it was your bowl. Well, he was using it as a hat earlier, so with all due respect. So it's a one. I don't know. It's a no, one. no, we're not. Yeah. One's pushing it. Let's not pull my pants Carl. down. I'm being on. Stop talking. Yes. Let him speak. Presentation, I'm going to give him a five. Right. right. So now we're going to go to your. Uh... Yeah, what did I even make? I can't remember. Uh, I, I, can, can, I can really. I can really. It definitely wasn't. It was, it was frozen. It was frozen. I wouldn't have said it was a nice lolly. I would have said it was more of a frozen uh, texture. I think uh, it was uh, it was tasty. I'm going to be generous and I'm going to give you a six. But I'm going to push you up here because your presentation. You've obviously been hanging around in, in Michelin starred restaurants quite a long time and yeah. you can see that your dual presentation really made a difference. It made this stand out. So I'm gonna give you a seven. Okay, now we're at creativity. How can you judge creativity? I was told by a Michelin inspector many years ago when I sat down with him and I asked him what the best dessert he ever had was. And he said to me, it was a sliced, perfectly ripe mango. Nothing else? Nothing else. And I sat back and as a chef that's cooked for a long period of time, that really confused me because I thought to myself, he, the chef actually hasn't done anything to that. So when it comes to creativity, it's creativity and belief. So for you, Carl, yeah, creativity because of the frozen lolly and the jewel pot, I'm going to give you an eight. Oh wow! But for creativity, <laughs> so, someone who can sit back and look so calm and collected <laughs> in a kitchen and just put some salt and some black, on, <laughs> I'm going to give him a ten. A top score of 10 meant that overall Alex had taken the win, 
I'd achieved 40 points, but he'd managed 44. I'm incredibly surprised and happy about my win. <laughs> yeah, you better be. However, I have one confession to make. I went to the fishmongers. I'd thought something was up since I was sure he'd said he'd caught a sea bass when he called me during the challenge. I thought it was just me that had cheated. That is uh, I honestly believe. Well, the, I'm the, sorry, but I was supposed uh, to be the winner. Yeah, 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 I feel like I've been robbed. And then the guilt got the most of me too, and I kind of had to come clean. I did catch a beautiful rainbow trout, uh, and then I had an accident, and and it um, it slipped from my grasp and swam away. So my trout also was what? from the fish monk. Serious? <laughs> what? I so, think, well, I'm, I'm, oh. sorry, I'm sorry to do this, but the outcome needs to go back to you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! So basically what it means you both can't catch a fish. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whilst we'd both been humiliated about our poor fishing skills, it had been an incredible challenge, and from now on, neither of us will take the food we eat for granted.